Holds a lot of line. I've got 10 pound line on here at the minute, and um, that's really quite a good, a good quality reel. Um, you can still get these today. Uh, these retail at about, or I don't know, in Australia they probably take about $600 to get you one of these. Um, so they're, they're, they're pretty expensive. Um, other good reels you can you can use are um, Abu Garcia. Another really good make. Um, this is the SX20 Solron. Um, I don't think they make this one anymore. But this one's probably five years old, some, something like that. But this is this was a really heavily built one. Um, but any any sort of um, average to upper quartile Abu Garcia real thick spool um, for me is 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 a really good value, super value. Um, and um, there's a lot of other good makes, Shimano, um, do some very good, nice reels as well. Um, but like I say, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're going for a reel, I'd go on the internet, I'd search for your, search for your top 1 to 10, 1 to 5, and, um, and you can pinpoint a reel like that. You can go into a tackle shop and ask for advice. There's a lot of good um, tackle owners, tackle shop owners who would um, give you, you know, sound advice. Um, but you want to go in there with the, the approach of sort of, you, you want some sort of um, upper quartile sort of fish and tackle. And, you know, the, um, the very best stuff for me is, um, it's lovely to own, but um, you, you don't necessarily need that good quality tackle. Um, and that's very expensive. And you can get some really good tackle for like one tenth of the price for some of the top end reels and bits and pieces. So, you know, um, you want average good quality gear is the, is the way to go. Um, so that's the Abu Garcia. Another one here by Shimano. This is a slightly bit bigger reel. This is a, a Stratic 8000 and I've had this for about 10 years. And it's never let me down. And it's designed for um, holding more line off the beach, tackling bigger fish. All that sort of stuff, and it's very grimy and sandy and gritty and scratched. But that—that that is a real workhorse, and that's just been—it's as smooth as anything. Still, I just apply a little bit of oil, a little bit of real oil in there now and again. WD-40 on it, 
Um, if you get it wet with salt water, just rinse it with fresh water. Um, get all the sand off it, try and keep all the sand off it. And just um, plenty of oil, plenty of real oil. And that, and that sort of protects it. So that's, that's the, the reels. Just a quick one with um, rods. Now boat rods, if you're looking for a good value boat rod, which isn't gonna bust the bank, um, and it'll take all the clatters and bangs of being on a, on a boat or a charter boat, um, the ugly stick. The ugly stick version of rods been around for years, and they are as solid as they really are, and um, awesome value. And they've got a nice tip on them, and they're very light. And um, for me, you know, really fantastic rod. And I've, I've been using ugly stick rods for um, for God knows how long, 30 years or so. Um, so that's a, that's a good one to look out for. Um, another another good rod company is. Shimano, this is a Raider, this is a snapper rod, very light, nice tip on it, that's about $120 and you know it's good quality and you know it's tough, it's just an all round very very good rod but again if you want to if you want to do your research on what rod to get go on the internet type in um, the top five or top ten best boat rods or this is that and the other You've got to have a rough idea of what particular rod you want. There's lots of different rods for different purposes and all that, but I probably haven't got too much time to, get to go in that too much today. Um, but I tell you, my my um, what I what I what I own, I have a, a beach rod. I have a Storm uh, 13 foot Gomoku beach rod. It's um, 13 foot, cast 150 gram lead. And that rod is ideal for fish off any breakwaters, off the beach, bigger fish. Um, that's a very nice and light, good long casting. You can do um, spin fishing with it off the rocks. Um, very good all round rod. Nice and light, you can hold it all day. The, the, the rod rod design has changed a lot for, for, for lightness and casting ability. So, And that was a really, really good um, quality rod and it cost me about $180, something like that. And that's a really good value rod. Um, and then I have the um, have a snapper rod, rated at about, I think, eight to um, 10 kg um, line, seven, seven foot. I've got a, um, a 10 to 20 pound class rod, boat rod. And then I've got sort of light boat rods, two to four kg. Um, but there's, you know, there's the whole, you, you know, for whatever fishing you do and if you if you're going after sort of smallest sort of fish bream whiting you want the sort of the two to four kg if you're going after the snapper you want the sort of the six to ten pound sort, sort of class and if you're going after the big stuff then obviously you want um you know the, the 20 to 50 pound sort of um class rod um but a a, a good beach rod um will handle um some really big fish off the shore if you're going after a mulloway um, off a break wall, which can be very difficult to catch. A lot of people they use, um, you know, like boat rods or sh shorter rods. It can pose a little bit of difficulty when you're trying to get the line out of the rocks. So I use a beach, a my 13 foot beach rod, um, and um, manage you can keep the line away, 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 away from the rocks. Um, so just so that's a bit, a bit, a little bit on, on, on tackle um, without boring you too much to death. Um, so, with regards to and the same, the same principle applies to when you buy new terminal tackle as well. You want to pay an extra few dollars and just get the slightly better brands. There's a lot of sort of cheap hooks out there, and this is I mean, it would sort of do a job. But um, I've been fishing for a lot of years, and I, I, I like to use the uh, more the top end sort of sort of tackle. To um, I just find it's just nicer to use. The lines are nicer to tie. Um, you know you. you what you, what you want to do, you want to try and get your tackle, um, you know, to really tailor towards the, the species you're going after. So um, I, I, I use brands like Ona for the hooks, and sort of a top end, sort of, this is the, the Mutu Light Circle hook, size number two. Um, anything by must, Mustad are, um, are pretty good. Um, what else is there? Berkeley power bait do some nice um, lures to, to retrieve. Um, you know, you want to you want to just spend a little bit, a little bit more money on your on your on your tackle and your rods and reels. 
to um, if you want stuff to sort of t to last and, and give yourself a, be a better chance. But um, it does take a while um, to, if you're starting out fishing to sort of to, to get all your sort of tackle together. And obviously, it helps if you've got friends or family who sort of are into fishing as well, because um, you know a lot of the times you get sort of handy down tackle off other people and um, advice of other people to sort of point you in the right direction and what's good and you only got to spend a, a bit of time in the tackle shops looking at, at if you really get into it you look you look at um, the different fish and tackle in, in a shop what what there is there's, there's stuff for, for um, people who just want to do a day's fishing for the first time and it doesn't cost a lot at all but it will last that stuff will last you literally not very long at all um, and then you've got the, the better 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 range all I would say is if you're starting out you might just want to sort of um, get a set of gear which um, isn't going to break the bank because from my experience from fishing for a lot of years um, I've, uh, I've bust rod tips in um, car doors I've, I've stepped on rod tips and bust them I've had fish on and, and bust, bust them I've um, fallen over and um, broken fishing reels bent the handle, bent the mechanism inside and I'm talking an expensive reel here I'm talking about three or four hundred dollar reel um, I've seen I've seen rods um, dropped over the side. I've seen rods pulled over the side by fish. Um, you know, there's there's a lot which which can can, can um, go wrong with the um, with, with your tackle. So, you if you're starting out, I wouldn't go um, hell bent on getting the top of the range tackle for a start because you, you, when you when you're fishing, you do really have to take care of it. it can be, if you're fishing on the rocks, when you put the rod down, remembering where it is. You put the rod down. You've got to worry if someone else is going to walk past and tread on it. All that, all this sort of stuff, because they are relatively sort of fragile. Sometimes you can get away with with instances like that, but um, you do have to be mindful of um, things which can, can go wrong. So if you're starting out, you probably want to go in the budget range. But if you're feeling like you've been fishing a while and you know you want to start upgrading to the to the better gear, it'll, it'll improve your casting. Um, you know, and it's um, like I've been fishing for you know for. How long have I been fishing? 35 years. So you know, I sort of, um, I sort of like, realised that you know, some of the importance of having good quality tackle is everything. When you when you hook up to a good fish, you know you've got confidence in the tackle you've got on the terminal tackle and the rod, and you you know you've got your, your best chance of um, of landing that fish. But that only comes with experience. So anyway, so that's just a little brief insight onto um, my my thoughts and views on. On fish and tackle, um, so um, I hope that sort of helps. And um, yeah, I'll um, I'll keep you posted if I've got any other uh, uh, um, topics I can sort of uh, communicate with you. All right, thank you.